the one-day hormone check, a 24-hour salivary hormone test for assessing key hormones. Hi, I'm Stephen Goldman. I'm a medical education specialist at Genova Diagnostics, and I'll be going over the one-day hormone check. The objectives for this presentation are to decide when the one-day hormone check is the most appropriate profile for your patient, to interpret the results of the one-day hormone check, and to place the findings in the context of a case study. Here's the one-day hormone check salivary hormone results. Contrast it with the menopause plus salivary profile. The one-day hormone check has estradiol, estrone, estriol, testosterone, and progesterone, but they're all collected one specimen, one time, whereas the salivary hormone results on the menopause plus would be over alternating days, three different collections, and an average. So we look at an average over three days. Let's take a look at the sections of the one-day hormone check. It begins with therapeutic cohort results, then the salivary hormone results, the comprehensive melatonin profile, and the adrenal cortex stress profile, which also includes an add-on option for cortisol awakening response. And you can see that there. Cortisol awakening response provides us with a look at the resilience in terms of the production of cortisol. The therapeutic cohort ranges or for a specific group of patients as indicated regarding hormone replacement therapy. So this is a range of patients 37 to 62 years old. These women were treated with bias transdermally, progesterone orally, testosterone, again transdermal, and 7-keto DHEA orally. If your patient is on a similar protocol, you may find the therapeutic ranges of interest. Your patient's findings are found on the left. So you see estradiol, estrone, estriol, testosterone, and progesterone. The therapeutic ranges are listed on the right. The one-day hormone check results done in one specimen on one day include estradiol, estrone, estriol, single-day progesterone, as well as single-day testosterone, one specimen, and the progesterone to estradiol ratio. When would you consider the menopause plus as opposed to the one-day hormone check? They both have their advantages. For perimenopausal women who experience greater fluctuations in their hormone levels, the menopause plus may be more appropriate because it casts a wider net and you're getting a calculated average. Whereas the one day hormone check is very similar in terms of what it measures, but it's done one specimen in one day. Menopausal women may find this a good fit since their hormone levels tend to be more stable, less fluctuation. Premenopausal women who do not wish to collect over 28 days, and by that I'm referencing the rhythm or rhythm plus test, may also find this profile a good fit. Both tests allow for HPA axis with melatonin and adrenal cortex stress profile. For a better understanding of the HPA axis and its imbalance, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, it's a good idea to look at the steroidogenic pathway chart. It begins on the left with cholesterol to pregnenolone to progesterone. But under stressful situations, toxic exposure, infection, inflammation, you may find that progesterone produces higher concentrations of cortisol. High cortisol can lead to less production of DHEA and the downstream estrogens. Increased cortisol production can also influence thyroid and insulin levels. In addition, an increase in mineral corticoids can lead to a stimulation of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, and that leads to tachycardia and higher blood pressure.
The adrenal cortex stress profile provides insight into the HPA axis. It demonstrates a diurnal circadian rhythm, so we're looking at the level of cortisol throughout the day. We should start off with a higher level that comes down gradually and levels off as it continues to go down. Cortisol responds to stress, which can disrupt the HPA axis. Elevated cortisol increases insulin resistance and glycemic dysregulation. Elevated cortisol influences the circadian rhythm of hormones. Notice we're looking at the width of the reference range in yellow, and green would be one standard deviation. Cortisol secretion increases in response to inflammation. The HPA axis influences the production of DHEA, testosterone, and estrogen, as we demonstrated in the previous uh, slide looking at the steroidogenic pathway. Another view of the HPA axis is through the comprehensive melatonin profile. Melatonin impacts the release of sex hormones. It decreases levels of cortisol, and it's a strong antioxidant. It influences mood and sleep, but it also works as an anti-inflammatory. You can see that we're measuring in three different locations, but we have that 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., which may be a response to levels of cortisol at that time, as well as that 2.30 to 3.30 a.m., which may also try to bring down cortisol levels. Let's take a look at a case study. For our case study, we're looking at a 61-year-old female. She complains of hot flashes, headaches, vaginal dryness, restless sleep, fatigue, and overall joint achiness. She's not on any hormone replacement therapy. She works in the human resources department at her company and describes it as a high-stress job. She tries to eat a balanced diet and avoid sugar, exercise, weekend hikes, occasional movement exercise class at the gym. The therapeutic range begins the one-day hormone check, but there's no hormone replacement therapy for comparison here. Her results are on the left. The therapeutic range is on the right, but again, she's not on hormone replacement therapy, so there's really nothing to compare to. So let's go directly to the salivary hormone results. We see a low estradiol, a low to moderate estrone, low estriol, and low testosterone. Her progesterone is moderate. So the key points here, estrone is the primary circulating estrogen in menopause. But estrone binds to alpha receptor sites in breast tissue, making it risk-inducing. When you see estrone, you think about monitoring detoxification of estrogen. And you can do that through urine testing, the complete hormones, or the essential estrogens profile that only looks at estrogens and estrogen metabolites. Estriol is not considered risk-inducing and can be used locally. Our key points, there's an overall pattern of low estrogens associated with vaginal dryness, sleep disturbances, hot flashes, and headaches. Low testosterone is associated with joint aches and sleep disturbances. Now let's take a look at her adrenal cortex stress profile. We see a high waking cortisol, and it remains robust until 10 p.m., so she's making a great deal of cortisol. Again, remember the steroidogenic pathway chart where pregnenolone and progesterone may be pulling towards cortisol production, sometimes to the detriment of DHEA. Here we see high cortisol throughout the day, although it does come down to a more normal level at 10 p.m., which is encouraging because when you see a high 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. cortisol, it's likely the patient is not sleeping well due to that increased cortisol. Now, she still has sleep issues, but it doesn't appear to be cortisol late at night. In addition, it's encouraging to see that her DHEA level is moderate. 
So with that moderate DHEA, that tells us that she's still able to make a lot of cortisol, but not necessarily to the detriment, at least up to this point, of production of DHEA. I question the possibility of insulin resistance because the 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. cortisol jumps up a bit. Sometimes between meals, and between meals is usually 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., the waking time, as well as in the middle of the day between 3 and 5, there's a, there's a need for glucose. And as a result of insulin resistance, one may find a surge of cortisol to provide greater availability of glucose. Her hot flashes can be associated with elevated adrenaline. We often think of hot flashes and low estrogen, which may well be appropriate here. But although we're not measuring adrenaline, if she has surges of adrenaline, that too can lead to hot flashes. The melatonin can rise in an adaptive change to lower cortisol. It provides antioxidant and anti-inflammatory functions. So let's compare side by side the adrenal cortex stress profile with the cortisol circadian rhythm and the melatonin profile. We have a high waking cortisol at 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. We also have a slightly elevated outside the green into the yellow uh, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. melatonin. Sometimes melatonin will adapt and elevate in an effort to bring down high cortisol. We also see that the 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. cortisol is reasonably within the reference range in the green. And as a result, we have a lower level of melatonin. Our treatment considerations. The hot flashes are associated with low estrogen and possibly elevated adrenaline. Consider hormone replacement therapy to increase estrogen. Include progesterone. Consider testosterone to help with joint issues and sleep as well as fatigue. Be certain to monitor those levels. Review diet to help with possible insulin resistance issues. Adrenal support through stress management, including heart math, adaptogens such as relora, and increase exercise, more anaerobic consistency. Thanks for watching. If you have questions, please explore our website, www.gdx.net, and you can see a listing here of Learn GDX. GI University Live GDX with previous webinar recordings and conferences, schedules of the events we attend, as well as a test menu. Again, thank you so much for listening. If you have additional questions, we have our phone numbers listed for US and UK client services. And please schedule a complimentary appointment with one of our medical education specialists like me. See you on the phone.